Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to create the Incredibles 2 logo as a wallpaper in Photoshop. Now a couple of assumptions I need to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2018. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. Let's name this as uh, Incredibles 2. Uh, width of 3,840 pixels, height of 2,160 pixels, 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit, the background, we are going to make a nice rich red. In my case, I'm using A2071A, okay? Uh, and the color profile is going to be sRGB, and we're using square pixels. Hit create, and we are now ready to begin. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to unlock our background by double-clicking on it. And then we're going to name this as red and we're going to hit OK. Now that it is unlocked, we can give it a layer style of a pattern overlay. So let's go down to our uh, layer effects. Let's go to pattern overlay and we're going to give it this pattern overlay, a blend mode of overlay, opacity of 20%. And the pattern that we're using is called denim. Now you can find it if you don't see it uh, under this little arrow, then under the sprocket and then go down to texture fill, click on that, replace current patterns, hit OK, and then you will see all of these, and it is the number nine pattern right here. Okay, denim. Okay, once you have that selected, hit scale by 225%, and then link with layer, hit OK, and we now have our background ready. Next thing that we need to do is get a center point on this, so we're going to make sure that we can see our rulers, and if you don't see them, go up here to view and rulers and just click on that, make sure it has a check mark, uh, and then click on the ruler itself, drag down until it snaps to the center like so at exactly 1080 pixels, and do the same thing from the left, drag that over till it snaps at 1920 pixels. Once you have the center point, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, change our foreground color to a nice orange. So let's click on our foreground color and then let's put in this nice orange of FF9 uh, F02. Okay, we now have this nice bright orange. We're going to hit OK and then we're going to go to our... Um, our ellipse tool here. Okay, uh, if you don't see it, it's underneath the rectangle tool. Just click on it, the flyout menu will come and do go to ellipse tool. Once you have the ellipse, just click once anywhere on the image. Don't drag, just click and up will pop up the create ellipse options box where we can put in a width and a height. And the width that we want is 1550 pixels and the height that we want is 945 pixels. Uh, from center doesn't really matter, hit OK and we now have our uh, oval. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move that, so hit V on the keyboard or go up here to your move tool and then just click and drag until it snaps to the exact center like so. Then let go. We now have our uh, first ellipse of the logo ready to go. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new layer above our ellipse one and then we're going to name the first ellipse. We're going to name that as orange like so just so that we can keep track of everything and we can hide the, uh, the effects on our red layer. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do next is click on our new layer that we created and we're going to go back to our ellipse tool after we change our foreground and background to their default. So hit D on the keyboard and that will change it to the default with black as your foreground color and then go back to your ellipse tool which is U on the keyboard and then I want you to click once anywhere on the image and we want to now put in a new width and a height. And the width that we're going to use is 1230. Uh, and the height that we are going to use is 750 pixels. From center, again, doesn't matter. Hit OK. We now have a black circle. And then we are going to uh, center this also. So let's go back to our move tool, which is V on the keyboard. And let us center this guy right in the center of our document like so. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer, okay, by hitting Control J, okay, and now we have two of these, ellipse one and ellipse one copy. 
Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to name these as black left and black right. So let's double click on ellipse one and let's name it black left and then double click on ellipse one copy and name it black right. So now we know that we have a black left and a black right. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to select the rectangular marquee, which you can get to up here uh, right over there okay and you can get there by hitting M on the keyboard or just by selecting it like I did now we are selecting the black left layer here okay and what we want to do is draw a rectangle around the left half of our image like so you just need it large enough to get the black circle or uh, the black ellipse okay once you have that then you want to go down here to the mask icon on your layers palette click on that and now all you will see is the left hand uh, half of the circle or ellipse. And then we're going to do the same thing on the black right, but we're going to select the right side of our ellipse. Uh, and we are going to, whoop, let's make sure that we get it right on that line like so. And then we are going to click on our um, mask and we now have the left and the right sides of our uh, ellipse. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to um, transform our left layer. So let's click on black left here and then let's hit control T on the keyboard. Okay, and here's where it gets a little uh, interesting. We're gonna go up here to our options bar for the transform tool. Okay, and we're gonna select the relative triangle, okay, which is this guy right here to make sure that we are now relative to where we are so if we don't have that selected it's giving you the exact location of the center of our object which we don't want for this we want to make sure that it is at zero pixels and zero pixels okay uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the y axis axis which is uh, right here okay and we are going to change this to uh, 80 so 8 0 and you see it moves down 80 pixels. Okay, then we're going to accept that. We're gonna hit the check mark. Then we're gonna do something very similar to the black right. Okay, we're going to um, go to our transform tool, which is control T on the keyboard. And then we're gonna go up here, make sure that the triangle is still selected. Then we're gonna to go to our Y axis and we are going to make this negative 80, like so. Then we're going to select, uh, we're going to accept that, and we now have the true beginnings of the actual logo. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create another new layer above our black right layer. So we're just going to select and make a new layer like so. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our foreground color over here. Uh, and we're going to change our foreground color to F4, 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 uh, 11. Okay, this nice bright yellow. Hit OK and we are now ready to create our eye or, or the, uh, it's, it's an eye but it will turn into the, uh, the two for Incredibles 2. Okay, so we're gonna select our uh, rectangular marquee tool and we're gonna click anywhere on the image like so and we're gonna put in a width and a height. And the width and the height that we're going to put in is 250 by 650. Okay, from center doesn't matter, we click OK, and we now have our I. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to center this. So let's go to V, and let us center this, like so. Okay, and then we're going to hit Control T, and we're going to transform this. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our y-axis, and make sure that this is still selected, our y-axis here is going to be at uh, 205. And our vertical, which is this guy over here with the V, we're going to make that vertical negative 10. Okay, and that will uh, kind of make this into a more of a, uh, what is this, a, a, a parallelogram. That's what it is. I couldn't remember that for a second. This is a parallelogram. So we've now got a parallelogram going here. Uh, and once we've got that, we're gonna hit the check mark to make it okay. I don't know why this is popping up. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do uh, is we are going to um, select our 
orange as a mask for this. Well, let's let's name this as I2 first. So let's let's name that I and the number two because this is going to be an I and it's going to be split down the middle and it will look like uh, two, the Roman numeral two. Uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to um, select our orange as a mask for this. So what we're going to do is you're going to hit control on the keyboard and then click on the thumbnail of orange and you'll see a selection here of our orange layer. Then we're going to make sure that our uh, I2 layer is selected and then we're going to just give it a mask like so. And that cuts the bottom off so now it's sitting inside of the emblem and we now have uh, the logo looking more like the actual Incredibles logo. Next, we are going to go to creating a brand new layer here. We're going to set our foreground back to black, which we can do by hitting D on the keyboard for uh, default values. And now our foreground is black. And we're going to go back and select our rectangle tool again, which is U on the keyboard. And then we are going to uh, click once anywhere on the image. And then we're going to put in 40. And we're going to put in over here uh, on height, we're going to do 650. Like so, we're going to hit OK, uh, and then we're going to center this again. So go back to your Move tool and let us center this like so. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we are going to um, transform this. So let's hit Control T, uh, and we're going to go to our Y axis. Remember, make sure that this is still selected here. And we're going to make this 180 like so. Uh, and then we're going to accept that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select our orange as a mask for this, just like we did last time. So control, click on that, it, it will make an outline of the orange, and then we're going to go to our rectangle one here, and we're going to make it a mask. Uh, and we're going to rename our rectangle one as, um, let's just make this as black line, uh, just so that we know what that is. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select the ellipse tool. Well, let's first make a, uh, a, a new layer here. Let's go up here, make a new layer, and then let's swap our foreground and background. So, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to select this yellow again as our foreground color. So let's go over here to the eyedropper tool, which is I on the keyboard, or go up here to the I again. Uh, and get the eyedropper tool. Let's select this yellow, and we now have yellow as our foreground. We've got our layer here, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, ellipse. We need our ellipse tool here, so we're going to click once anywhere on the image, and we're going to put in a width and a height of 300, so it's going to be a complete circle, okay? Uh, and then we're going to hit OK. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to center this ellipse. So we're going to go to our move tool, which is V on the keyboard. We're going to center this right there, like so. And then we need to transform this. So control and T. Okay, we're going to make sure that our relative triangle is still there. And then we're going to make our Y axis here of uh, negative 390. Okay, that will put it right up at the top there. We're going to hit enter. Uh, twice just to accept it uh, and that will now be called our outer dot outer dot okay so now we've got all of this here now what we need is the inside dot so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set our foreground color to white and you can see our background color is white so we're just going to swap that by hitting X on the keyboard and we're going to create a new layer up here and then we're going to uh, go back to our ellipse tool which is U on the keyboard uh, and you can see here that our uh, color up here did not change to white and that is because we started here with that. Uh, so what we just have to do is change our color to white when we are done. Uh, and we'll just click once here and we'll make our inner uh, dot at 150 by 150. Okay, and you can see it's going to come up as yellow. Now the easy way to fix that is you just uh, fill it with the foreground color. And you hold down Alt and Backspace and that will turn it into a white circle. Then go back to your Move tool. Okay, move this down to the center here. Uh, or if you wanted to, you could just go up here and it should snap to the center of this guy, but I like to work where I know exactly where things are gonna be. So I'm gonna move it down here to the center. Okay, and well, you know what, let's not. Let's just center it directly to the center here. 
uh, of, of this guy. Let's just go like this. That should center it right there. That looks centered, right? Let's uh, control H to hide that. And yes, that seems to be very much centered. Uh, so now that it is centered within this, we're gonna rename this as inner dot, like so. Uh, and then we are gonna group all of these together. So we're gonna take our inner dot. We're gonna make sure that that's selected. We're gonna scroll down until we get to our orange layer. We're gonna select all of them by holding down shift and clicking on orange. And then we're gonna group them by hitting Control G on the keyboard, which will group them. Okay, we're gonna name all of this as logo, like so. And then what we're going to do is give logo a pattern overlay, because as it stands, it looks kind of a little flat. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a pattern overlay. So we're gonna go down here to our effects. We're gonna to go to pattern overlay. And the pattern overlay that we're going to do is gonna be an overlay. It's gonna be only at 10%, like so. And the uh, pattern that we're using here is called loose threads. It's found under textures also. Let's see if I can find loose threads here. Uh, hmm. Where are you? Loose threads, right there. That's loose threads. Uh, and the scale that we want this to be is gonna be at 185, like so. Okay, hit okay. And uh, now what we wanna do is we wanna give this a new curves adjustment uh, layer. And that's gonna give us a nice, a nice look of um, a vignette around the outside. So we're gonna go down here to uh, our uh, adjustment uh, layers, and we're gonna to go to curves, select our curves, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the uppermost handle on the right hand side here, and we're gonna bring it down almost to the bottom, like, a, like one quarter of the way from the bottom. Okay, and that makes everything nice and dark. Then what we're gonna do is click over here under curves to the masks, and we're going to change the feather here to 175, like so. Okay, and that's all that we need to do there. Now make sure that the mask here is selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, set our foreground and background back to their default, which is D on the keyboard. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to draw a elliptical marquee. So let's go to our marquee uh, and select the elliptical marquee. And we're gonna draw a nice big marquee here. That's an oval and we're gonna center that to the image, where's my thing here? Uh, there we go. We're gonna center that to the image like so, and then we're gonna fill that with black, control backspace, fills it with black. Control D will deselect it, okay? And then what we wanna do is we wanna set this layer's opacity to only 20%. So let's select that, hit 20, and we now have a beautiful wallpaper of the Incredibles 2 logo. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.